Hey everybody, my name is Matt from Teach Me Residual and welcome to my very first online video training. Today I'm going to cover Google Webmaster Tools, just a basic overview and what we will actually cover is adding a site and getting it verified with Google, explaining some of the basic metrics that Google Webmaster Tools produces for us, and we will submit a sitemap which essentially helps us get indexed in Google much quicker than if they were to crawl our sites on their own. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, let's head right on over to Google Webmaster Tools. So you can see I already added my new client website right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys how to do it. So you just put your domain, I'm sorry, your URL right here and hit continue. It's added. Now clearly we can't just add a website and we have to verify ownership. So Google recommends that we do an HTML file upload, which I'm going to show you guys how to do step by step, but I will show you a couple other options you may want to do. If you already have Google Analytics verified and set up on your account, that would be a really quick, easy way. There's a couple other options, but honestly, I always stick with what Google does recommend. So go ahead and download this HTML file. And next, we're going to want a FTP client. And I use FileZilla, whether you have a PC or a Mac. And it's free, it's safe, it's easy to use. So once it's downloaded on your computer, go ahead and open it up. Go to Site Manager up here on the top. I already have my information signed in. You're going to want to put your website URL in the host. Port you can leave blank. Make sure protocol is on FTP. Encryption. I'm going to use plain FTP is fine. Login type should be normal. And your user and password. Now depending on who you use to host your site, that's where you'll find this information. So go to, you know, if you have GoDaddy, I'm personally using Wealthy Affiliate. Um, they offer online courses and they have a bunch of tools and services. Um, I can give you guys some more information if you're interested, but that's where I went and got my information from. So find your hosting site, get your FTP username and password, insert it, and hit connect. All right, it's actually listing successful. All right, so next, as you can see, I have this Google HTML document that I downloaded and verify that it's the same one. Now next I'm going to want to go into, this is where we connect it to our site. And these are the files that we're looking at. We want to get into HTTPD, not HTTPS, but HTTPD, double click. We're going to want to right click on our file here. I'm sorry, select it, right click and hit upload. successful transfer which means everything went okay we can go ahead and quit out of that and at this point we can click verify with Google and it's that quick now we have a verified added site all right I'm back on my search console I'm gonna quickly go over some metrics that Google webmaster tools provides for us. Clearly the site that I just added and verified won't have any of this information, but I do have a site that is relatively new, but does have some action. You can check out. All right. Since this is just a basic overview, I'm just going to cover what I personally think are the most important aspects of Google webmaster tools. And first that is your status. You want to make sure your DNS, your server connectivity and the robots fetch, which is how Google crawls your site. You want to make sure those all have a green check mark. If they don't, you need to get in contact with whoever hosts your site immediately. A URL error isn't the biggest deal. It does show though that you have a broken link or a broken page is somewhere either indexed or on your site and you need to be careful. Do not change your do not change your URL once it's created. If you do, you're going to run into these issues a lot. Um, like 
I said, it's, it's not the biggest deal for indexing your ranking, but it is a big deal for people that are trying to, you know, navigate your site, and it just makes for a bad user experience. Uh, the next thing I want to cover is search analytics. So we're going to click that. Go to impressions, click, click through weight and position. And I just clicked all those just so they showed up on this little graph here. Now a query is something that you showed up for in Google. No matter if it was one time or a million times, that's what a query is. As you can see, SEO analysis tool, I showed up once. Yes, my position is buried really low, but I showed up once. If you're not showing up for a query, if it's not here, then you don't even have one in Google. But as you can see, I have a thousand impressions. I have 15 total clicks from these impressions. Impressions means they saw it once, but they didn't click it if it has a zero click. So that 15 divided by that gets me my click through rate and my average position for all 245 of these queries is 176. So you're going to see your position go down dramatically when you add new content because when you start to target different keywords, you're obviously not going to position very high for it. So I mean, that's why, especially since this is a relatively new site, we have a, a lot of uh, a lot of crazy data. Um, so we have some additional filters up here. Um, you can filter by page, filter by country, filter by device, like mobile or desktop. Search the web, images or video, if you have a specific type you're going after, and then you obviously have dates. All right, let's move right along to Google index and index status. This shows us how many pages and posts Google currently has indexed. As you can see, it could go up or down depending on if you delete a page or a post and they update this once a week. So that's interesting to know to see how many are currently updated because as you can see, I have 41 indexed right now. If I go back to my sitemap, I only have 27 submitted and 25 of those submitted URLs, 25 are indexed. So that means that there are some old pages and old posts that are currently indexed that I don't necessarily want on there, but it's not that big of a deal. Google will take care of it. And since this is relatively a new site, and as you can see from my search traffic, you know, it's not a big deal really what's going on there all right so next we're going to check out crawl stats we already checked out crawl errors all right so crawl stats shows us a few different things pages crawled per day it's just showing us the activity google is having on our site obviously this is good and this is also good this means that they're spending a lot of time on the site lately now this is about the only important thing to really cover on this page. Now this shows how long it takes Google to download a page. And if it's taking Google a long time to download a page, then it's taking your visitors a long time to download a page. Download a page. And if it takes you a long time to download a page, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly, you know, I'm pretty impatient and if it's not if especially if it's a new site that I'm not familiar with yet, I am probably not going to wait around. So as we can see here, this is a little higher. This, your average, honestly, ideally should be below 300. Now, some things you can do to fix this would be to make sure that you're not uploading a ton of stuff to your site, really heavy pictures, big pictures, um, too many pictures, or a ton of plugins to your site. Um, if you are installing plugins to your site, it's usually not the number of plugins that matters. It's the quality of plugins. So make sure that whatever plugins you are putting on your site, they have a good rating. They're, you know, they're well known by developers. You know, they're not just some brand new, brand new, not tested. I mean, that's just not a good idea because you're, you're really going to start making your site impossible to load. Um, the next thing I'm going to cover, you know, you check out security issues. So if you get hacked or maybe if you have some malware, but not a big deal right now. And 
the last thing I'm going to cover real quick for Foresight Maps is Batch as Google, which you won't really have to worry about once you do submit a site map, but if you want to by hand, you can put in different pages. You don't even have to put in the URL, just where you want Google to fetch as, and you can click fetch. You don't have to really worry about fetch and render right now. But then you can see the status, and then you could submit it for indexing. And this is a way to get indexed much quicker than just waiting for Google bots to crawl your site. All right, and finally, I'm going to show you guys how to submit a sitemap to Google Webmaster Tools. A sitemap is a XML file that essentially tells Google when you have added a new post or a new page and helps you get indexed much quicker than waiting for the bots to crawl your site. Now, I'm going to show you guys, in my opinion, the best way to do it with WordPress. If you're not using WordPress, there are a lot of good tools out there that can generate you a sitemap. It's pretty simple. Just throw it in Google and you'll get your XML file and then you can follow the rest of my steps. So I'm going to head on over to my WordPress dashboard. I'm going to go to my plugins, add new, and Google sitemap. There are a lot of these plugins, but I would personally only use the one that's about to pop up here. Just my opinion. The one thing about WordPress is it's not great as it takes forever. All right, so Google XML sitemaps, good ratings, over 1 million active installs. Go ahead and click install now. And activate plugin. And literally, this is how simple it is. You just go right over to your settings, click on the new plugin you have, XML sitemap, and boom, this is your sitemap. Now that's about as simple as it will be if you found a generator and you weren't using WordPress, it's about the same thing. But I'll show you guys what it looks like, it's very simple. Exactly what it sounds like. It's a sitemap for Google to more easily navigate your site. So go ahead and copy that. Head back on over to Google Webmaster Tools and click on Sitemaps and Add. And since they already have our address here, all we have to do is find out which most cases will be sitemap.xml. Should double check just in case. And we can test it. Great. It worked. <laughs> Type that right back in. And submit the sitemap. So it's submitted. We can see if it shows up. Yep. Sitemap showed up. Um, I've already added the sitemap before. It's saying I have three errors apparently. You know, yours might take a little bit to show any information. But yeah, that's as simple as that is. All right, guys, that wraps up my very first video training. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope it was helpful. If you have any comments or you'd like to add anything, please do so. Um, if you'd like to also check out my new site, Teach Me Residual, you can go ahead and click that link. I'll put that in the comment section below as well. If you'd like to subscribe, I will also be doing some future video trainings. If you have any opinions on what I should do in the future, I'd definitely love to hear them. Otherwise, I will see you next time.